gentlemen, the maestro has made his decision and will now crown the Queen of Waltz. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Her Majesty, the Queen of Waltz. Will the king dance with the queen? Tell me first the queen's name. Emily Trampush, Majesty. Public health, Vienna. I have to clear this with the Ministry of the Interior. Read the back page. It has the approval of the Minister and Chancellor Prince Metternich. I don't see Metternich's signature. I assure you he approves. Gentlemen, by order of the Minister of the Interior and with the approval of the Chancellor, Prince Metternich, this public gathering is hereby terminated. No! This action has been taken in the interest of public health. You must now disperse. In the name of his Imperial Majesty. is terminated! This is my last warning!
But I say categorically, Chancellor, there would have been no trouble if my police had not been ordered to intervene by some petty official from public health. I take full responsibility for that. That gathering was a health hazard of the worst kind, Chancellor. If you hadn't sent the police in... If I hadn't sent the police in, I gave no orders to the police. The order came from your official. While this epidemic continues, I have a statutory duty to forbid gatherings of more than three people. I cannot allow by law these public entertainments. According to my information, and I speak of reports from eyewitnesses, Chancellor, the entertainment was perfectly well behaved. That's not the point. It was only when some jumped-up official from public health ordered my police to intervene that chaos descended. You signed the order too. That's my point. When the mob heard that the Emperor was leaving Schoenbrunn because of the cholera, wisely, in my opinion, the riot might have erupted then. But the music of this man Strauss calmed them. He's extremely popular with the lower orders. They even call him the King of Waltz. If we'd left it to Strauss, they'd have gone home happy and content in their own time without a thought of cholera in their heads. It seems that this man Strauss's music is more influential than the fear of cholera. Oh, indeed, Chancellor. Yes. The people love him. His music well, is I first the music class. Of Joseph Lanham, I myself am a great admirer. Well, he is very influential. Oh, no, he's very influential indeed. Indeed, he is uh, most influential. Well, I'm a Strauss man. What happened this time? Don't tell me your carriage broke down again. Where did you sleep last night? At Hershey's or in a field, on a park bench, or somewhere else? There's no point even trying to explain. You're obviously determined not to believe me. Why don't you try telling the truth for a change? That may convince me. Who is she? What are you talking about? Why are you so determined there has to be another woman? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did spend the night at Hirsch's. Because I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, how very thoughtful. You didn't want to disturb me. Instead, you give me a sleepless night, allowing me to toss and turn, worrying myself stupid, imagining one minute you'd met with some dreadful accident and the next, thinking of you in the arms of some young strumpet. Anna, the first performance ended after 1 a.m. I left immediately for the next venue. What was I supposed to do? Send a messenger to come round here and knock on the door and say I was going to be late? That's the way things are. It's the pattern of my life. Oh, yes, I know. You leave me and three children all alone. And the doctor says I've got to spend these next few weeks in bed. God, how am I supposed to manage? How am I supposed to cope? I'm sorry. Sorry! Night after night you do it, crawling back here in the early hours. Sorry, sorry, yes, well, I'm very sorry. You come back here smirking like a thief that struck gold. Anna, will you please try to calm yourself? You're letting your imagination run riot. Dear Mrs. Strauss, it grieves me to have to tell you that your husband, the renowned king of gigolos, Johann Strauss, has for some years been conducting a liaison with a diseased little whore. Her name is Emily Trampush, who pretends to be a milliner, a career she seems to pursue lying on her back. He visits her often, spending the nights with her. Her dress is Lechengasse 11. Who's it from? Well... Don't tell me it's anonymous. 